Well, we're here today to talk about Mary Baker Eddy and making a movie called The Healer, and I've read most of the manuscript, and it starts out with a healing, Mrs. Eddy healing a little boy, and I think that's the way to present Mrs. Eddy. She's first and foremost a healer, because for the modern age she rediscovered the practice, the science of Christian healing. And she said that Jesus of Nazareth was the most scientific man that ever trod the globe. And to think of Jesus as a scientist is a little unusual. I'm myself an astrophysicist and a quantum physicist, and I'm a practicing scientist. I have over 100 refereed publications in the scientific literature. And what that means is that other scientists have said this work is original, and it's important enough to appear in the literature. And unlike newspapers, a newspaper, the news is here today, but then it's gone tomorrow. Scientific literature, depending on the value of the paper, can last hundreds of years. So when you have something refereed in the scientific literature, it shows you're being a practicing scientist. So Jesus as a scientist means that he was not doing miracles to impress people into certain religious scientific behavior. It means he was demonstrating a deeper truth. And Jesus himself said that he came to bear witness to the truth as his mission. So actually, to reveal the truth as opposed to starting a new religion was Jesus' purpose. And so Mrs. Eddy perceived this, and that Jesus was a scientist, and that he was demonstrating deeper, deeper laws. And Jesus himself can be seen to have stated the scientific method. For example, he said, when he was approached by the religious people of the time and asked who bore witness of him, he said, they said, did John the Baptist? And he said, John the Baptist is the best human authority you have, but he doesn't bear witness of me, my works do. Well, this is news, this is scientific method, experimental verification as better than human authority. And so Jesus may have said, made the first statement of the scientific method. He also said, in case the disciples weren't getting it, he said, if I don't do the works, don't believe me. So he said works exclusively were to be valued as authority. And then he said, there's a principle, a creator, a source, that I go to for the healings. So in other words, there's a principle of the universe that is the source of the healing, and that anyone could go to this source. So he said, what I say unto you, he said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the works that I do shall ye do also, and greater works than these shall ye do, because I go unto my Father. And he wasn't talking about leaving. He was talking about turning to God, his Father, for the healing. And because it's a science and a general principle, then we too can turn to God for that healing. Well, this is a science Mary Baker Eddy discovered. And she said, Jesus of Nazareth was the most scientific man that ever trod the globe. And then she defines what it means to be a scientist, a Christian scientist. And that is that he plunged beneath the material surface of things and found the spiritual cause. So that's what Mrs. Eddy discovered. She reintroduced healing into Christianity. This was not a usual practice in Victorian Christianity and she reintroduced and modernized the whole concept of not just reintroducing Christian healing into Christianity, but she said it was a science and therefore, as Jesus had said, we could all practice it. So her story and her discovery is the reason for this film. We don't want to keep this a secret. This is something everybody can go to the Father to practice. So that's the reason I support this film is because people need to know that this science has been discovered, that it's been put in scientifically modern terms. It was formerly called Christianity. It's now called Christian science. And that we should know that it's there to be practiced. So it's kind of a modern version of the Gospels in that our book that we're writing is the practice of the healing scientifically that Jesus practiced. And so Mary Baker Eddy's story really needs to be told. And so that's kind of just a quick once over lightly. So, how, should we do questions and stuff? Yeah. <coughs> yeah. Is that okay?
I mean, that's Thank basically you. why I, as a scientist, I can support this. And science and Christianity are not separate, you know? I'll just throw out the great unifiers of science are the big heroes, like Newton. Newton unified the terrestrial physics of Galileo and the celestial mechanics of Kepler in the form of gravity. And so he was known as a great unifier, and we honor Newton today. James Clerk Wa Maxwell unified electricity and magnetism in the 19th century, and he's called the 19th century Einstein. And of course, Einstein unified space and time. So it's the unifiers that are the big picture people in science, and um, Mrs. Eddy unified science and Christianity which is a big breakthrough because people thought unconditional love, that's Christianity, and unconditional truth, that's science, and she said they're the same thing. So she is a great scientific unifier. But in the 19th century, she is recognized more as a religious leader. In the 20th, I think people, if they look into it, have to give her credit for a re being a revolutionary in medicine and healing. But it took the whole 20th century for natural science to catch up with the most elementary things Mrs. Eddy said about the nature of reality. So in the 21st century, I think Mrs. Eddy will be, start to be recognized as a scientist. So we can help bring that about. So okay, enough of, I want to hear <laughs> from you guys. <laughs> Thank you for sharing with us that you believe this movie ought to be made. As a member of the board, um, at one point we received a very long letter for someone who was very unhappy with us for wanting to tell Mrs. Eddy's story. And another time, as I gave a presentation, uh, a person in the audience seemed to think that we could talk about why we shouldn't make this movie. And so I'm, I'm wondering how you feel uh, we can overcome that that tone, unfortunately, in the Christian science field where they don't think we ought to be telling people about her, of which I don't agree. <laughs> well, um, we have to decide if we're caretakers of a religious tradition, in which case we want to stay under the radar and keep the religion safe and unharmed and pure, unquote, or whether we're prophets of a new science the science of reality, and we need to share it with everyone. I mean, it's like you guys had a cure for this disease and you didn't let the world know. You know, it's like keeping it a secret is not an option because if we don't share Christian science, somebody else is going to rediscover it. And that's why I bring in quantum physics. They're not doing Christian science, but they are sure becoming metaphysical at such a rate that we should be paying attention. And we often think like, here's Christian science and spirituality on this side. And the other side is medicine, materialism, and science. It's like, no, newsflash, science is on this side. The quantum physicist is the Christian scientist friend. <laughs> and it's, it's not that quantum physics and Christian science are the same thing, but no trend in quantum physics is toward objective matter materialism or any of the things that are generally taught on the materialistic side. It's all becoming more and more metaphysical in the same direction that you'd have to say Mrs. Eddy already discovered the nature of reality and consciousness and matter and so on. So as a scientist, it's a very exciting time to know about Christian science as a science. And to me, it's like, what could be the sources of fear? for making a movie. Well, maybe they won't get it right. Well, let's make sure we get it right. And uh, what else? Well, maybe people will start attacking us. Well, you know, I think the medical facility, for example, once they understand what Christian science is better, would go, hey, this is great stuff. Why have you been keeping this from us? Mrs. Eddy said that the best class of doctors and nurses and all are wonderful people and unselfishly serving and all. And I, I look at them as going into war with sticks and rocks. And if they could have a bazooka, that would be really handy. So yeah, I think we need to address the fear. I think it's only a handful of, of fear here and there. But getting it right, absolutely clear on what Mrs. Eddy did and her role. 
will silence a lot of concerns, I think.